Unit 2 Nature's Chemistry Hydrocarbons and Homogenous Series Crude oil Crude oil is a finite fossil fuel. It's a mixture of lots of different compounds, but the main ones are carbon and hydrogen, and these are called hydrocarbons. Crude oil itself is finite, taking millions of years to form. The hydrocarbons come in different lengths. Short, 1 or 2 carbon chain lengths. Longer, 70, 80, 90. And these are separated using something called fractional distillation. The fractions have different boiling points, the longer ones being higher, so they come off at the bottom of the fractionating column. The shorter ones, being lower, things like gases and petrol, come off at the top. Longer carbon chains are not really a lot of use, so these can be cracked, i.e. broken apart, to give smaller, more useful carbon chains. This is done with a catalyst, and will always give two different compounds. Hydrocarbons come in three flavours that we need to do understand. We have alkanes. Alkanes have single carbon to carbon bonds. Simplest methane, ethane, propane. And they have a general formula of CnH2n plus 2. There are chemicals called alkenes. Again, simple compounds, but with a double carbon to carbon bond. These have a general formula of CnH2n. A third group called cycloalkanes, where the carbons are not in a chain but in actually a circle, also have a similar CnH2n formula. Alkanes are called saturated because all the carbon to carbon bonds in there are single. Alkenes are called unsaturated because they have at least one carbon to carbon double bond present. The test for this double bond is to react with bromine solution. Bromine is brown, but if put in the presence of a double bond, the bromine molecule will split and add across the double bond, removing the bromine from the solution. So, meaning that it goes clear. Hydrocarbons are named first off using the suffix either in or in to indicate whether there's a double bond present or not. The length of the carbon chain is given in Greek with. A Greek prefix of either meth for one, eth two, probe three, bute four, pent five, hex six, hept seven, or oct eight. You need to know the first eight. And then any functional groups like double bonds or branches is added to the name. In the example given, there's a double bond on the second carbon to the third, so that is put in there. The longest carbon branch is six carbons, one, two, three, four, five, six. That is put in there. The branch is a single carbon, so in this case, and it's on carbon number three from the main branch. That's what we have there. It is always best to name from the reverse end. So in, then add the double bond, two, then add the longest carbon chain, hex, then the branch methyl, then the number of the carbon for that branch. Always remember, make sure you add all the H's. Every carbon has to make four bonds. Ensure that the, correct, the spelling is correct. And always number to give the lowest possible numbers possible. 
Something else to look out for are isomers. These are chemical compounds that have the same molecular formula but a different structure. In the examples given below, we have a cycloalkene and an alkene that both have the same general formula, C3H6. And we also have two alkanes. Again, both having the same general formula, C5H12, but a different structural formula. Consumer products are materials like alcohols, carboxylic acids and esters. These are made originally from sugars. Sugars come in three types. We have monosaccharides, simply meaning single sugars. We have disaccharides, where we have two of these sugars fastened together. And we have polysaccharides, poly meaning many, which, so we have several hundred of these sugars fastened together. Monosaccharides are things like glucose and fructose. They are isomers of each other, so they have the same formula, but a slightly different structure. Disaccharides, maltose and sucrose, again, isomers of each other, but a slightly different structure. And polysaccharides, things like starch. The method of distinguishing these sugars is to use a test called Benedict's solution. Benedict's solution will go orange when heated in the presence of sugars like glucose, fructose and maltose, but will not change colour with sucrose. And they will not change sugar uh, colour with things like starch or cellulose. These can be tested for starch and cellulose by iodine solution, which will go from brown to blue black. But again, this will not occur for sucrose. That is how you would find the, the sugar out. The sugars are, to, to make things like starch or anything, it's a condensation reaction where water is removed or a hydrolysis reaction where water is added to break up the starch. These can also be, sugars can also be used to make ethanol, alcohols. Alcohols, we looked at in a moment, but the process is fermentation, where the sugar is broken down with the yeast, with the enzyme, zymase in yeast. In effect, the alcohol is the waste product from the sugar, from the alcohol eating the yeast, eating the sugar, which causes the alcohol. Alcohol has a slightly different boiling point to water, and so can be increasing concentration by distillation and condensation of the alcohol as it boils earlier. Alcohols have the prefix anol at the end. They contain a hydroxyl group, OH, and they are named as you would do with hydrocarbons. So, in the example given, anol, longest carbon chain probe for three, the branch methyl, and the carbon number two. Properties of alcohols are that they are pH neutral, and they are flammable. So they are actually used as a good use for fuels, they are good dissolvers, so they are good solvents, and they are good disinfectants. Carboxylic acids contain a carboxyl group. This is what it looks like on the last carbon. Again, as with alcohols, they are named as we would do with hydrocarbons, but finish with the term anoic acid. Again, in the example given, anoic acid, probe for the number of carbons, methyl 
for the single carbon branch and two for the group that it, the carbon number it is on. Al uh, carboxylic acids, again, are good solvents. They have a pH of less than 7. They are used in things for preservatives, think of vinegar, which is ethanoic acid, and they are used for flavours. If alcohols and carboxylic acids are reacted together, an ester is formed. This is formed from a condensation reaction. In a condensation reaction, the H from the alcohol functional group, the hydroxyl, reacts with the OH from the carboxyl functional group from the acid to get with water being released. Naming an ester involves adding an O8 to the alcohol and to the acid, sorry, and an IL to the alcohol. You always put the alcohol name first, so in the example given, propanol becomes propyl, and propanoic acid becomes propanoate. Esters are flammable, they are very good solvents, and are often used in perfumes and in flavourings. Alcohols are exceedingly good fuels. They are clean, not polluting, and in general carbon neutral. Complete combustion, where oxygen is unlimited, will always give you carbon dioxide and water. Incomplete combustion, where the amount of oxygen is limited, will give you carbon monoxide, water, and often carbon particulates soot. The questions often asked about combustion reactions involve reaction quantities. So you look to the number of moles of each of the materials being inquired about. Start out by laying out the equation and putting the number of moles under. And then just multiplying by whatever ratio is given, i.e. 1 to 2, if the amount of water was required from the amount of methane given. The more common question is the amount of energy present in a fuel. We will be given the specific heat capacity in front of the data book, the mass of the liquid converted to litres, so 100 millilitres, 100 centimetre cubed becomes 0.1 of a litre and the change in temperature. This will give you the amount of heat required or given off. 